second segment of the show for today. The topic is the Somalia pirate crises. And of course, we have uh, with us to continue our conversation uh, dealing with this uh, crisis in a real sense in Somalia, uh, Professor uh, Robert Picard uh, from Tennessee State University as well as uh, Middle Tennessee State uh, University. And of course, uh, Professor Picard, let us pick up uh, where we left off. Uh, I think we went into that mm -hmm. uh, second, first segment. Uh, we mm -hmm. stayed uh, too long in that segment. And so let's mm -hmm. sort of pick up at uh, where we left off. Okay. Uh, to have you to talk about Somalia and uh, some of the crises okay. that you uh, see there. Okay. Now, first of all, I wrote an article which was uh, published uh, this past Tuesday, the 12th, on mm -hmm. uh, on Somalia and really about what was called the axis of upheaval. Mm -hmm. uh, the historian Neil Ferguson, who I'm sure you're familiar with, mm -hmm. uh, wrote a recent article in Foreign Policy magazine mm -hmm. entitled "Axis of Upheaval." in which he says that three factors can predict lethal organized violence. First of all, ethnic disintegration, uh, economic volatility, and thirdly, empires of, in decline, when structures of imperial mm -hmm. rule have crumbled, battles for power surely are most bloody. Um, he mentioned uh, several countries mm -hmm. there. He talked about Russia might be joining that list. The okay. Congo, of course, mm -hmm. is very much, uh, the Congo for 12 years has been torn apart mm -hmm. in, in uh, rebellion. You've had uh, Rwanda, of course, at one time. I think Rwanda's mm -hmm. in good shape now. Mm -hmm. um, you've got um, Mexico, our nearest neighbor, Very thanks good. to the laxity of our gun mm -hmm. laws in this country, which, are, which is an outrage. Mm -hmm. um, they are becoming that way with the narco problem, mm -hmm. the narco terrorism, as we're talking about, mm -hmm. or, the, or the gangs. Somalia has since 1990 basically mm -hmm. been an anarchy. Of course, All we right. had soldiers there for a short time mm -hmm. and, and we had to leave. Um, and the problem with the pirates is nothing new. They've been um, poaching their neighbor Kenya's uh, mm -hmm. wildlife for a long time. As mm -hmm. you know, rhino horn is mm -hmm. sold as an aphrodisiac in, in okay. Asian countries. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have also become a training ground for groups like Al Qaeda and mm -hmm. others that uh, the other terrorist groups, mm -hmm. as well as criminal organizations. And uh, the pirate thing is very easy for them. It's just mm -hmm. like um, off the co our coast in this mm -hmm. early 17th century, late, seven, uh, late 17th, early 18th century, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you've taught in class. Mm -hmm. It was very easy for pirates to. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, to stop ships mm -hmm. because they, uh, they wouldn't put up any uh, fight. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody's going to fight for somebody else's property, mm -hmm. and that's the same thing happening here. And they've got a million mile coast there along mm -hmm. through the Gulf of Aden. This is one of the most strategic and important uh, mm -hmm. shipping areas in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the reason I say that this has been coming on for a long oh, time mm -hmm. is I could see it when I was there in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. um, Somalia has five points. If you refer to the Somalia flag, mm -hmm. there are five points on the star in the flag. Uh, the star is right in the middle of the mm -hmm. flag. The five points stand for um, two parts of the country of Somalia mm -hmm. proper. One is northern part, which was once a British colony. Mm -hmm. The southern part, which is Italian. Um, it also includes the Oge, or not the Oge, then, excuse mm -hmm. me, Djibouti, mm -hmm. which uh, is north of Somalia, it's an independent country, mm -hmm. which is Somali, but French Somaliland. Mm -hmm. You have uh, a part of, a uh, large part of Ethiopia there called the Ogaden, mm -hmm. which are ethnic Somali, mm -hmm. and part of Kenya, which mm -hmm. um, is Somali. And so all of these places uh, Somalia claims. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the Organization of African Unity, of course, has been against any kind of changing borders because, mm -hmm. quite frankly, as I'm sure you know, the, the Europeans drew the mm -hmm. borders of the African countries mm -hmm. to suit their own purpose, like, very mm -hmm. arbitrarily and capriciously. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's why there's so much ethnic and tribal conflict there mm -hmm. and also why, uh, you know, a lot for a lot of other things, there's warfare between mm -hmm. tribes, there's tremendous corruption. Anytime mm -hmm. any group fits in, they're going to... Mm -hmm. um, They've, uh, you know, particularly in countries that have oil like Angola, they're mm -hmm. going to try to take this. Now, what happened with Somalia in 1976, of course, Haile Selassie, who ruled the country very benevolently for many years, uh, was overthrown by a new group led by a man named Mengistu. Mm -hmm. And um, Haile Selassie had always left the Ogaden alone. They didn't have any interest in being part of, uh, mm -hmm. of Somalia, neither really did Djibouti or parts of Kenya. But um, uh, they began oppressing and trying to remove mm -hmm. the Somali people from their land. It's possibly because of the mineral wealth there. Nobody mm -hmm. is really sure, but 
but uh, thousands of refugees began leaving. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, the Ethiopians, if they caught these people trying to leave, they would chop off their hands. Okay. Uh, so I saw a lot of people without hands. Mm -hmm. um, In your own experiences. Yes, seen. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Now, um, when they got into Somalia, the um, they were the same ethnic group, mm -hmm. the same tribe, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. as the people, uh, the host country. That's mm -hmm. very unusual, mm -hmm. very unusual in most of these countries. And it was a major crisis coming on kind of the tail end of the uh, mm -hmm. of the Cambodia crisis, or about the same time, actually, as the mm -hmm. Cambodia crisis. And um, UNHCR, one of the justified budget, UNHCR came in to manage this, but they didn't register the refugees. So mm -hmm. there's no possibility of telling who, who was a refugee mm -hmm. and who was not. Uh, because of the ethnic, uh, well, the same group of people. Mm -hmm. um, so the uh, right at first, um, the uh, food was being distributed. It was being sent out from the capital, Mogadishu, mm -hmm. and trucks. And the trucks would head straight up to Djibouti, sell the truck, sell mm -hmm. the merchandise. People oh, were starving. This was food that was supposed to be for the refugees. Right, right? exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, finally, um, the um, UNHCR brought in CARE, mm -hmm. ELU CARE emergency logistics unit to distribute the food and they actually in the early days when they had the first UN volunteers there they were actually riding shotgun on mm -hmm. trucks to make sure they got where they mm -hmm. went uh, by the time I'd gotten there it had calmed down a little bit but what had happened is the country had become dependent on refugee aid okay. they claimed that there were over a million refugees like a million three hundred thousand refugees mm -hmm. it was far more than there were there were probably about four hundred thousand UNHCR just arbitrarily decided on a figure of 700,000. Mm -hmm. But uh, constantly they were claiming I, the place where uh, Jalaloxi was the name of the town where I ran my, um, mm -hmm. um, where I, I ran the operation. There might have been about 14,000 refugees. They claimed there were 85,000 refugees. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. about four times the population of Murfreesboro at that okay. time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just ridiculous and everybody knew it and we would tell privately in private conversations we tell these people mm -hmm. with the Somali government look you're not fooling anybody everybody knows what's going on mm -hmm. you think we're stupid and they would pay no attention they had a very you know fatalistic uh, there's something about Islam that's very fatalistic mm -hmm. in a way um, and so we told them you're asking for trouble and uh, that's what happened the government basically kind of unraveled toward the ends of the 80s mm -hmm. those refugees began leaving the country and going into Ethiopia mm -hmm. and Kenya and these places um, the, co the government disintegrated night around 1990 when uh, the president uh, Bade was Siab Mohammed Siab Bade mm -hmm. was uh, killed and uh, since then it has been an economic and political basket case mm -hmm. um, the, uh, of course, we had troops there for a short term in the 1990s, and mm -hmm. we, you've seen Black Hawk Down, you saw what happened there. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed when I saw a frontline film about this is that men in helicopter, soldiers in helicopters had their feet mm -hmm. uh, hanging out of the helicopter, mm -hmm. and feet are dirty in the, uh, mm -hmm. in Somali culture, that's an insult to mm -hmm. them. Um, and I wish I'd been there to tell them that they're mm -hmm. taking off their shoes and waving it back because they mm -hmm. see it as an insult. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, mm -hmm. we've got a serious problem there now, and mm -hmm. we're going to have them in other countries as well if we don't act. Mm -hmm. And so in a real sense, you think that uh, there's just simply a collapse of uh, any kind of governmental authority mm -hmm. right. in Somalia, and right. that, that that is the uh, basis for... They have a president of parliament right now, mm -hmm. but really with no power, and they can't do anything. It's basically divided by medieval warlords. It's like something you see in a post-apocalyptic mm -hmm. movie. Okay, and of course, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Picard, let us take this uh, second commercial break, mm -hmm. after which we'll come back and give you an opportunity to elaborate upon some of these things. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Mm -hmm.